Hi, my name is Roxy and I've been serving in Romania since May 5th. Um, we had a team of six people come into Romania and I came a little later and the first thing we did when I arrived at 6 a.m. is go to the Ukrainian border, cross it, uh, go into Ukraine and buy food, a lot of food um, on the resources that we, on, on the money that we raised. Our stay in Donaivtsi got cut short. Uh, there was a nuclear bomb threat and so our leader decided that we're going to go back into safety into Romania and in Romania we helped out at a center called Fight for Freedom, a refugee center where we made small events for the children and we made an event for, uh, for the women. One of the highlights is the Mother's Day event that we had. One of the girls on the team had an idea to go buy food and buy presents for the mothers and make a Mother's Day event. So that's what we did. We decorated the living room, we got little lights, uh, we just made it look very homey and very special for them. And then we invited them in and we prayed with them, uh, shared, shared some snacks, had tea and coffee. And then um, a woman named Oksana, who we partner with in, in Romania, uh, kind of like led everybody into a conversation to talk about themselves and like what happened in their life, who they are. So all the women were introducing themselves, who they are, uh, where they're from. And there was a lot of tears, a lot of, of pain that they were sharing because a lot of them came from the war zones. A lot of them don't have homes either. Um, and they were just talking about how they would risk their lives to get water. So the women were sharing like their stories of who they are, where are they from, what they did before the war, and and a lot of and a lot of times they would share how they got out of the hot spots and how they would risk their lives to get water for their children, um, how it was mentally very hard, how it was physically very hard, how they would run under shellings, um, how they would they would hide in their in the bomb shelter uh, how they would hide in the how they would hide in the bomb shelters and just how they would spend days in their cars trying to get somewhere safe and there was a lot of tears a lot of women cried i cried you know it was just so um hard to see that this is what they were they had to go through and it's not only them but just the responsibility they had to have children with them um, put so much weight on you. And honestly, we just, we all cried there. Um, it was very hard to hear their stories. And I don't think that I can just retell them. Uh, but after the event, uh, a lot of women came up and they said, this is the first time in a long time after the war they felt at rest and at peace, that they actually felt like a woman. And it's so interesting because it's such a small thing. It's such a small thing, food, coffee, and a talk. But it does such a big thing. Sometimes we don't think that, um, that it can influence somebody like this, but it can, you know? And we spent a lot of our resources on medicine, we spent a lot of our resources on food, humanitarian aid, but just being able to spend this time with them and just letting them talk about what happened to them, not letting, letting them um, share and us listen really, really helped them. They would always talk about it later. Like even when they left, they would be like, oh, the Mother's Day event was so good. It's such a small thing, such a small thing. But it was such a big thing at the same time. That's why it's so important to spend time with people. You know, so important to talk to them about what happened in their life. And um, this is the conversations that lead um, people into being ready to receive the gospel even. There was times where I was able to talk to the to, to the to the women, um, able to talk to the men, and share Jesus. Um, 
there was a time when there was this man who, uh, there was there was a time when there was this woman and she looked at me and she said you know roxy uh when i hear about uh the russians getting bombed i know it's a sin but i actually have joy in my heart when i hear it and she and she's crying she's crying with tears she's like i know it's bad and it's like what do i do in that situation what do i tell her if i truly know jesus that i can tell her about the hope that we have in him and how he is the one who takes care of everything like that he is the judge of everything you know like i think sometimes we underestimate the work that can be done with refugees or people who have went through this trauma um i think that there's way much more work to be done because a lot of the people still stayed um a lot of the people are still um in different countries you know poland romania germany um and like there is there is uh hope for them and that hope is jesus and the main goal is not to only help them but to realize them that i can help them physically you know i can provide i can be the hands and feet somebody else can be the one who provides the finances but the only one who can provide uh peace and forgiveness and healing for them is christ Um I just hope that people are able to see God through us and I think they did because the Bible says do good do good things the Bible says do good things and the people will see it and they will glorify your father your God who's in heaven um so This is a very important job. It's a very important job. After um the refugees, uh we had kids camps. Oh, like kind of like it was actually very cool. It was kids camps, teen camp, and mom camp. Like it was so nice. People would all come together and there were there were people who worked with the mothers, people who worked with the teens, people who worked with the children. I like teens. and I got to work with teens. Our camp was for children who were unchristian. A lot of children who are actually just the children who are Ukrainian. A lot of them had to drive 17 hours uh not drive, go on the train 17 hours um uh getting from Kharkiv to the border. We were picking them up from the border, gathering all the passports, making sure that that everybody has their stuff everybody has their documents and um at the camp we had an opportunity we had 5 days with the children 5 days an opportunity to share the gospel with them but uh everybody comes from a different uh background somebody's an atheist somebody somebody is cutting themselves you know somebody's watching pornography like this is this is children this is what they are in right now and uh we got the opportunity to be there for them we got the opportunity to talk to them we got the opportunity to understand who they are and like little by little day by day um kind of like understand where they are in life and share the gospel with them the cool thing is some people stayed more than a week and we were able to uh to read the bible with them. I I did not have the opportunity, but other um leaders um uh, that we partnered with had the opportunity to start reading the bible with the children. And there was no force. We did not force the bible to them. We did not force the gospel to them. We shared it through our works. We shared it through our words. Um and they wanted to read the bible. It was so cool. and this work is not even finished a lot of those souls that hurt they uh they're still in the process you know a lot of a lot of the people that uh, the cool thing is 
um, after camps stopped in uh, in Romania, so Chava, there were camps in, in uh, Budapest. And so the children who uh, came on the first week of that camp stayed and went to Budapest and became leaders there. And so through that process, they learn who God is. They learn what God did for them. And then they learn uh, how to serve at the same time. You know, it's just, it's such a cool thing. It's not of, oh, I shared the gospel with them and that's it. It's, I shared the gospel with them. Um, they had a desire to go forward and now they're serving. It's not always perfect. They're still battling things, but they are able to, to have people by them that can disciple them. And they were, they're able to overcome their, uh, their issues. And it's such a cool thing. I think that this is what we're lacking in America. Sometimes we just tell somebody, oh, like, here's the gospel, and that's it. But we don't actually go, th go, uh, go through with it, you know? We don't actually disciple them. We don't actually, we're not actually there for them. And we can do that for them, you know? Because it's important. But the kids in Ukraine are so open right now to hear the gospel, to hear the good news. So open for somebody to help them 